Hello and welcome back to another Briar customization video. Today we'll be making a carousel horse with a classic scale model as the base. I love carousel animals and have been wanting to make one, so when they released the Briarfest workshops this past year, I knew I needed to sign up for this class. It was taught by the amazing Laura J. Rocksmith of Crocus Cottage Creations. She designed and sculpted the 2023 Briar Carousel Ornament, so definitely check out her work if you haven't. If you do get the chance to attend Briarfest and they still have this workshop, I highly recommend it. They do fill up really fast though, especially this one. I believe it was also online last year, so hopefully they will do that again. But for now, you're stuck with me. Here's what I managed to finish at the workshop, so that's what I'll be starting with. I brought a few references I liked with me and made a combination of various elements. I added tassels to try her technique out, and they were pretty appropriate for an Arabian horse. We didn't have time to do any prep, so I'll be doing that really quick. His legs were a little bit bent, so I heat them up with my embossing gun and carefully bend them back into place. To finalize the position, I do a little dip into the ice water. I also sanded down all the seams and logo off camera. Thanks again to Laura, look how cute this sticker is. Now we can get to sculpting more trappings. I lay down a flat piece of epoxy and smooth it onto the horse with 70% rubbing alcohol. I will be able to cut the design into it, but it can't be too thick, so I really push it down. For the piece under the tail, I won't be able to cut it on the horse, so I lay it on my tile and cut it before placing it on. I don't typically do this for the other parts because it can warp a little when you place it. This piece is pretty simple though, so it won't really matter. I had some extra embellishments and now I can cut the shape out with my X-Acto knife. I clean up any edges with my silicone tool. I make sure to dip all my tools in rubbing alcohol before and after using them. I pay extra close attention to my references as I cut away to make the design. I typically use Aves Epoxy, but we were provided with Magic Sculpt, which I was excited to try out so I can compare them. I actually might like this slightly more than the Aves because it can get quite smooth and somehow softer looking. It is a little bit more malleable to work with in my opinion, which is good, but you have to be more careful. For the tassels I make a teardrop shape and press it on. Then I connect it to the trappings with a little ball. I cut lines into it to make the texture and then cut off the end and poke holes into the bottom.
I make sure the cinch tapers off at the top since I will be sculpting over it. This way it won't get too bulky. I start adding the saddle blanket. I'm using this neat little tool that I got at the workshop to really blend it out. I think it's for pushing back cuticles, which makes me a little queasy thinking about. I'm also trying to keep this bulkiness down as well, so I don't go past where the saddle will be. You can also draw on where everything goes first. I probably should have done that. For the creases to make it look like folding fabric, I drag my knife and nail tool through the epoxy. This is where I kind of prefer the magic sculpt. It's really good for smooth details. The workshop models all came pre-drilled for the poles, thankfully. Laura uses a drill press, but it can also be done using a regular handheld drill if you line it up right. Now once that hardened, I can add the saddle the same way, laying down a curved noodle to make the edge. For the seat, I made a long flat strip and bent it into a teardrop shape and blended the top. I stuck a piece of rolled up tape under the back so it will harden while sitting up. Now I can fill in the rest of the seat and smooth it out.
With all that hardened, it's time for primer. I'm using white since he will be a light dapple gray. I'm trying out this Tamiya brand, which is expensive and needs to be in perfect conditions, but so far it's the best white primer I've found. Of course, I had to do more sanding once I could see everything in one color, but after that, it's more coats and then time to airbrush. I covered him twice with white acrylic to make sure he was extra crisp, and in case the primer discolors over time. I'm using my Model Air paint and an Iowata Eclipse. First, I use light gray to shade everything. I can add this pretty sparkly black for the legs, hair, and face. Once that dried, I sealed him off camera with my Mr. Super Clear Matte Spray. It did dull the metallic paint a bit, but it comes back when I add the final gloss coats. I brush on some gray pan pastel and blow off any excess with my camera lens duster. Next I can go in with my kneaded eraser and make the dapples. I try not to make them too uniform and a little bit bigger on the rump. I spray that with more Mr. Super Clear. You can see it gets a little bit darker after you seal it. On to the next side. With that all sealed, I go in with my white Prismacolored pencil to give it some more unique shapes. This also helps add more contrast. I make sure to blend it in with a blending stump. Now let's add some color. I mix up this teal shade first, but the first coat was a little too green. Not to worry though, since I will need three layers, I can change it on the second coat. I thin the paint with water so I don't get brush strokes.
With all those coats done and dry, I sealed them for this next part. I'll be shading it with some ColourPop eyeshadow to give the teal some dimension. I take a dark blue on my eyebrow brush. This will make the sculpt stand out. Now I can paint the saddle. It looks really gross here, but trust the process. I will also be needing three layers of this. I also shade the saddle. I paint on the small details with dark brown. Now for my favorite part of this paint job, the gold details. I'll be using Tester's enamel. I wish I could use this on every horse. It takes a while to dry and ruins brushes, but it's so pretty. Of course he needs some fancy gold shoes.
For his eyes, I add the white corners and paint black over top. I make his eyes the same shade of teal as the decorations. I paint the little pieces of mane that go over the trappings. I decided to add a little decorative line on the saddle. I sealed him off camera with my tester's spray lacquer, and the metallic paint and even some of the saddle went back to being shiny. To take the gloss even further on the eyes and hooves, I paint on Liquitex varnish. At the workshop, we also got pre-cut and detailed bases, so I didn't have to make that. I did decide it would look nice stained, and I already needed to stain a piece of my staircase, so I figured it was perfect timing. I also didn't have to make the carousel pole. I know Laura made some Instagram posts explaining the poles she made, so I'll link those below. If you can't get brass poles or want to paint them to be colorful, wooden dowels are also a great alternative. You could even wrap them with ribbon. That would be so pretty. Now we're all done. Time for the final result. Here's the before. And here's the after. I'm so glad I finally got to make a carousel horse. I already want to make another one. Definitely check out Crocus Cottage, and if you do get to go to Briarfest, totally do the workshop. Or any of them, they were all pretty great. Thank you for watching. Make sure to boop that like button and subscribe for more projects.